Hi, it's Rupert Hine here from Action Coach in Kinross, and I'm joined today by Biswajit from Costa. Morning, Biswajit. How are you this morning? Uh, fantastic. And uh, well, the weather is looking up today. So uh, always uh, great when you're living in Scotland, as you know. Absolutely. It certainly is. It's a lovely autumnal day. So you, you've you been running Coaster. You, you, you created and you've been running Coaster six and a half years. So tell right. us. Who and what are Coaster? Um, so uh, it's been quite a journey, of course, in the first place. And, you know, we have meandered through um, uh, the, the way like any other startup. Coaster is a B2B software uh, uh, platform. We offer a B2B SaaS platform to mobility businesses, uh, namely kind of car rental operators or automotive companies or uh, large leasing uh, companies. Uh, mainly to help uh, manage their fleet and their mobility of offerings. It's quite an end-to-end -end, um, you know, platform, quite uniquely uh, designed and developed to deliver a lot of operational automation, uh, use the most modern technologies um, to provide uh, something that uh, replaces a lot of legacy platforms and deliver a huge amount of digital, um, what do you call, experience to both staff and their customers. So, so how did you how did you get involved in creating it in the first place? Um, well, it goes back to my own kind of you know um, passion for travel and kind of uh, that's where I use uh, rental services quite a lot, uh, car rental services. And uh, when I wanted to kind of you know start uh, looking at my own venture, um, I, I realized very quickly that if I don't uh, you know, solve a problem that I feel acutely about or you know feel passionate about, there's no point in actually. Yes, doing something on my own. So this was a, a particular pain point uh, that I really wanted to address. I, I felt, you know, uh, car rental providers offer a great opportunity to, you know, be able to utilize um, their assets to, you know, go about, uh, let's say, you know, on your holidays, it gives you the convenience. If you're using it for uh, business, it gives you the kind of flexibility. But the whole process of uh, renting cars can be quite cumbersome, uh, can be quite expensive, and can be quite non-transparent as well. Uh, so in trying to solve that problem for myself, I think I created Coaster and the idea behind it. And then it's gone, grown arms and lengths since then. Uh, um, in the last kind of 18, 24 months, I think uh, we have also turned the company into a force for good, uh, especially focused on the environment. Our uh, kind of vision is to help decarbonize the sector, and uh, we strongly feel that um, that will happen if uh, people started what do you call moving away to more flexible ownership rather than um, the kind of private ownership of vehicles that they hold today, uh, where the vehicles are not used for ninety six percent of the time, um, and and that means any uh, car manufacturers are you know uh, spending huge amount of carbon footprint in generating assets that are sitting idle for um, more than 90% of their time. So why have them in the first place? And that's kind of where asset sharing or shared mobility, as we call it, really plays a huge influence in enabling more flexible alternatives to private ownership and reduce the overall number of vehicles in the ecosystem, thereby having a massive impact on carbon emission. Yeah. So, so you've, you've, you've seen, you've seen the need it's come from your own, um, personal experience but <laughs> somebody who used in their previous roles <laughs> to do an awful lot of traveling I, I can I can see see the advantages there yeah you you you've had a a, a pretty high powered career in IT infrastructure architecture um with some pretty significant players in the past yes so I guess you've got you've got the technical expertise to start putting this into practice. How, how about turning it into a business? Um, yeah, I mean, that's a, obviously a learning curve I had to uh, learn. I've always been kind of, you know, a fast learner. So it was um, something I really enjoyed. Um, I think um, in the past, of course, in my kind of previous role at, at PwC as a management consultant, I have looked at businesses, not just from a technology lens, but also operational and, you know, business strategy, technology strategy. So I'm quite, um, what do you call, experienced in de de developing strategy as a whole for a business. 
but of course, you know, running a business comes with other aspects of, you know, admin, finance, uh, regulations, uh, board governance and other things, which I've learned over the period. Uh, but I, I think one thing which I strongly believe in also is um, your network and yeah, the strength of your networks. I've always relied on, you know, my uh, network. Uh, I've got some really good advisors who have given me um, sane and sound advice and, and at different periods of time. And just surrounding yourself with the right ecosystem and the support mechanism means you can learn off them and uh, implement. And uh, so that's kind of what I've done um, in the last six years. Fantastic. So, so what would you say has been, what was the biggest challenge in getting the business off the ground in the first place? Um, well, um, I think uh, getting it off the ground wasn't uh, the most difficult. I think it was staying in the ground because I think <laughs> well, this is uh, kind of interesting because uh, we are a mobility business, uh, you know, tech platform. Our customers are mobility operators. Um, we launched the product back in 2020, March. And as we all know what happened in March, 2020, um, I think that was the most significant lesson that any startup, I mean, doesn't matter whether you're in mobility or anything else, but being hit by a pandemic when everything is shutting down, suddenly everything is a chaos is scary. And especially when you know you have a you know short runway and um, you need to, to get, get things going and, and things like that. So, I think that was the biggest, you know, challenge we, or hopefully, or probably any of the other startups at that time faced. Um, and I had a really good team who, you know, saw it as a challenge, and we decided to make the most out of it. And to, to be honest, um, if I look back in the kind of eighteen months uh, during the pandemic and post, we actually grew as a company because we saw opportunities in um, things like, you know, how we. St- get the product out, get more users. Um, now, this is interesting because um, at that point in time, a lot of rental operators were sitting idle. You know, they had nothing to do. They had no business to run. Um, but also rental businesses can be quite resilient because sometimes they do have seasonality. So everyone assumed that this would be a seasonal thing, um, which meant that we had like you know five or six months where people were really busy, free. They didn't have anything to do a lot of of time on their hands. And we uh, used that up for uh, offering some free usership. So acquired like 15 odd kind of early adopters who were happy to offer their time, help us innovate on the product. And later on became uh, customers of ours as well. So um, I think it it was kind of momentous for us um, to try and overcome a a huge, um, uh, what do you call economic, uncertainty like the pandemic um but at the same time all the other aspects that came along with it but uh, 18 months later we we had grown the team you know by double the size we had raised more investments we we uh, in fact we closed around our first seed round um towards the end of 2021 um our beginning of 2022 so all in all it was uh, quite a challenging year but at the same time quite exciting as well as a startup that uh, found its feet during pandemic yeah absolutely i mean it's it, it it's it's interesting it was thinking back to to going through the pandemic and the number of people who talked about hibernating yeah and if you're in in car rentals <laughs> it must have felt awfully like that for a lot of your prospective customers where they've got nobody else out there and sort of put everything in mothballs and wait but actually, the lesson that you've just described is that that's the last thing you want to do. <laughs> Use the opportunity and get get really stuck in. Yes. So, so you've you've used that opportunity. You've brought on your fifteen early adopters. You've started converting them into customers. Um, how how did you grow the business from there? Um, so we commercially launched the product back in twenty twenty one and. From there on, it was, uh, again, we invested quite a lot in sort of the brand building. Um, and we always, you know, as a tech business, we always knew that um, we can't grow by, let's say, put adding more people, more growing the sales team, adding our cost, and then hoping they will convert. Um, so we spent a lot of money in kind of uh, the brand building itself, which paid off eventually because uh, even today, 90% of our 
um, you know, uh, wins come through digital marketing, spending that time in kind of SEO. Uh, we also rebranded the business. It used to be called Newvin Limited when I first started it. And then um, it uh, we rebranded to Coaster, which was a, a little bit more, what do you call, um, palatable name, um, uh, attractive name brand wise. So we put in a lot of effort in, in keeping, staying lean, but investing in growth in the right way. Um, we also kind of spend time on uh, partnerships. Again, um, I think that's our another of our kind of long-term acquisition channel where uh, we work with quite early on with some of the innovative companies out there who um, not only gave us kind of the additional, their own you know branding to support us, but also um, it, it put us in the right kind of, you know, um, list of being referred to from, from our partners as well. So, um, using a combination of sort of, you know, digital marketing, keeping our, um, sales team and sale cost of sales lean. Um, also we, the third thing we focus on, on the product and agility of the product. Uh, again, we have uh, a lot of SaaS companies, especially enterprise SaaS companies, lose their way um, because they get a big customer and the big customer starts influencing the product. Uh, and sometimes they even go in to become custom built product, uh, eventually not as true SaaS. But over the course of the last kind of, you know, three, four years that we have been, we have stayed very true to that kind of nature of the SaaS uh, type of business that we have. Um, and we have worked with all our users to innovate very, very rapidly. You know, we do monthly releases on the on the on the platform, which is quite unheard of in in a uh, industry like ours. And with that constant innovation, uh, it generates a lot of excitement in our users, and then they go and talk about it to you know other people. So yeah, it's been a combination of various things, uh, starting from digital marketing to partnerships to just getting our users to feel great about using our product and talking about it um, more openly. So all of that has led to kind of um, increase in, in our uh, membership. So we are about 70 odd customers that we have acquired in, in three years. And progressively, they've grown bigger and bigger in kind of size. Uh, now we are talking about bringing on board some large, massive kind of enterprise customers as well in the next um, 12 months. Fantastic. And you, know, you, you, you talked there about the digital marketing. What, what have you found has been the success What's been, what's been the biggest factor in making a success of the digital marketing world? A lot of it is about learning the data points. And I've got a really, uh, you know, thankfully, we've got a really good, strong head of marketing, um, Natasha, who leads the team. Um, she's very data-driven and very analytical. And I think that's been the main main way of really getting our, um, you know, funnel customer manage, uh, what do you call customer yeah, so I think most importantly, uh, being successful in digital marketing, I think the main thing was being very data driven. Uh, even now, we analyze huge amount of data. You know, starting from who comes to our website, uh, how how many users we have on our social media, how does that kind of go up and down? Uh, checking the ROI of our ad spend, marketing spends, um, going into events. You know, understanding the ROI of events, um, and then yeah, of course the more kind of traditional SEO and making sure we are we are number one or number two on the ranking uh, on Google um, and everything else. So all of that has obviously taken time um, to build, um, but I think uh, we have done really well in terms of being able to understand, analyze the data, and then kind of make changes where necessary. He's going to bark again, it looks like. <laughs> so what's next? Um, so I guess our, if I talk about kind of, you know, Coaster in the future, it's more going to be focused on, uh, now taking the next step of the business, um, you know, from a startup, uh, we are already in the kind of process of, uh, growing internationally, growing in different segments on, in the market. In the last 18 months, we have kind of pivoted to what we call as shared mobility. So it's kind of a broader TAM. Um, so, you know, from a hundred billion billion target addressable market, we are now talking sort of uh, five hundred uh, billion uh, target addressable market, almost kind of five times of what where we started from. Uh, but also, kind of international growth and expansion. Um, we already have uh, customers in few locations, but they are no more anecdotal customers. 
that we started off and kind of innovated on the product. Uh, now we are kind of seriously kind of considering next year to uh, start looking at uh, those, some of the markets and investing in, in growth in, in some of those markets more aggressively. Fantastic. Well, look, thank, thank you for, for sharing those lessons with us. I mean, the, that, you know, take, take, take what, take, take what the environment throws at you and keep, keep moving. Um, the whole area of, you know, marketing based on data and measuring your ROI is hugely important. Absolutely. Um, and absolutely seeing, seeing where you're going, it'll be, look, look forward to seeing you going on to ever greater success. So thanks Thank very much for joining us today. Uh, I appreciate your time. Very best of luck. Thank you, Robert. Um, and really enjoyed talking to you.